Hey Sun here, I'm a privacy and security researcher and you're watching the Privacy Guides. If you've been watching this channel for some time, you know one of the first episodes was actually about Firefox. Today's episode is a revised version of it and it's now easier than ever to set oneself up for private and secure browsing. It's essentially a two minute guide and it will completely transform our experience browsing. Uh, and by the way, this guide is not for the ultra paranoid. This guide is for people who want a certain amount of convenience while also having a private and secure browsing experience. So for instance, dark mode will work. It's not the most fingerprinting resistant uh, guide out there, but it's an amazing way of getting started with privacy. So if you go on sandnutson.com and you click explore privacy guides reference material, you can then click on the Firefox guide. I'll link to it down there in the description to make things easier for you. The first thing we wanna do is download Firefox. So you just click on that link. Uh, I kind of already did that to speed things up a little. And then you wanna drag and drop Firefox onto the applications folder. If you're on Linux or Windows, that step will be a little different. Uh, but yeah, that part you totally already know how to do. Uh, next up is user.js. There's this new magical file uh, that one can deploy and that essentially configures all of the little things that we had to tweak by hand earlier uh, and that is like so much more convenient. So just to give you a sense of what that file is, it's a whole bunch of settings or flags that will essentially configure Firefox when the app starts. Now, the really cool thing with this is uh, a lot of it is documented in a beautiful open source project called arkenfox slash user.js. You can have a look, but that project includes a lot of flags that degrades one's experience. So the ones that I have set on this repository are kind of a compromise between convenience and privacy and security. It's the stuff that I use and I absolutely love it. If you want more privacy than this, you probably should look into Tor. Um, all right, so now next up, we wanna start Firefox and go to that specific URL. So if I click on Finder, then if I click on Applications, I can just double click on Firefox uh, and then we'll be in Firefox. Now it's the first time I open it, so I wanna authorize that and go through the little wizard. So yeah, I wanna keep Firefox in the dock. Um, I wanna set Firefox as the default browser and I won't import stuff. You can do that if ever you want. Um, now I kind of like the default color and uh, I don't want to kind of hop between browser on desktop and mobile. I don't want to use Firefox's cloud, but that's kind of up to you. I prefer having those two things air gapped um, and yeah, that's it. We can start browsing. So next step, as you can see, there's a whole bunch of junk here. Uh, so we want to tweak this. So how do we do it? We want to go to about profiles and then there's a default profile here. So what I wanna do next is uh, I wanna double click on this little path. And now we're gonna do this kind of the hacker way. So you could go and show in Finder and you could go into this folder and yeah, but let's be a little, a little cool here. If you pop open terminal and you type CD and then you wanna put uh, quote, quote, then you paste that in and then you type open dot that will pop open that folder in a way cooler uh, fashion here. Now, so next up, if we go back to the guide, uh, next up is uh, essentially you wanna go into that folder and that's what we just did, and you wanna run this command. Now, you should never run commands that you find on the internet, but that specific one curl, you can look it up, it will download that file to that specific path that we're in, uh, and then if we do enter, it's done. Next step is restarting Firefox. So that's pretty cool. Uh, you just want to essentially quit Firefox and reopen it. That easy, okay? Now, once this is done, I can copy that link here um, and essentially open it up here in Firefox instead. And we wanna set up a few extensions. So the first one is Firefox multi-account containers. I'll explain what that does in a second. So you just wanna add it and that's done. Now you also wanna install this uh, privacy badger one. That's an extension that will block a whole bunch of trackers by the EFF foundation. Uh, so if I click on this and I say add, now you also wanna allow this in private windows. That's totally up to you, but I really trust uh, the EFF. So I don't think they're doing anything fishy. Uh, yeah, and now <clears throat> the next thing we wanna do is set the default search engine. So as you can see, by the way, when I open a new tab, there's a lot less junk, but it's still using Google and that's something that I don't like. So if you click Firefox preferences, 
Uh, and then you go into search. We can also just say we want to allow notifications. Maybe you have ProtonMail and you want to use that. Uh, now, now let's just set that to DuckDuckGo. And uh, also, I tend to like removing those because it's noise, really. I don't use any other of those, uh, honestly, paid placements, uh, if we're honest here. Uh, and now it's good. Now, the last thing you want to do is configure con containers. Uh, containers is a very powerful way of isolating websites. Uh, so all of the cookies that the websites use or share will be isolated within a container. So a great example of this is Google. Maybe you want to use Google search because DuckDuckGo is not helping for a specific type of query. So in order to do this, uh, really all you have to do is configure this little extension. So we're going to go through the little wizard here really quick. Um, and next, uh, we do not want to start syncing. Again, I don't want to use the cloud, so I say not now and it will really promote uh, Firefox VPN, which we won't use either. Now, if you go and manage containers, we wanna delete all of those kind of placeholder containers. So you just click on it and click delete, uh, click on it, click delete. Sorry, this is a little repetitive. And we're gonna create one that we're actually gonna use. Uh, that one is going to be called Google and I'm gonna give it the color red, okay. Now, once this is done, uh, if I go on google.ca, I'm in Canada, but you maybe it's google.com, uh, and I click on this, I can then say always open this site in Google. And that is super cool. That means that once this is done, if I pop open again, google.ca, enter, it will ask me, hey, do you wanna always open that in the Google container? And I say, yes, uh, always open in Google container. And that is so cool. That means that if ever I'm there and I type something and I go on a specific website, it will remain within a container. That means that if ever there are tracking cookies that are shared that Google are injecting in URLs, I know Facebook does a lot of this, uh, and you might wanna create a Facebook container if you're into Facebook, I'm not. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. By the way, uh, this episode was made possible by Superbacked. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm developing a company that's used to create encrypted paper backups. Uh, they essentially look like this. It's a way of storing secrets. It could be your master password for a password manager. It could be your mnemonic in the context of crypto. It's super cool. So there'll be a link down there in the description if you want to look it up. I'll see you soon. Bye.